Hi, my name is John Borhek and I'm Chief Solutions Architect and CEO at VMSource's Virtualization. We're a VMware Enterprise Solution Provider and Full Service Virtualization Practice. We'd like to take this opportunity to give you an early look at VMware vSphere 5. Let's go ahead and get started with installing the hypervisor, the VMware Visor Installer 5.0. In order to install ESXi 5.0, we're going to need to access one of our servers. We'll use HP's Integrated Lights Out Management, which is accessed by using a web browser. With Integrated Lights Out, or ILO, you have access to a remote console. This is the equivalent of the keyboard and mouse that's attached directly to the server. With ILO, you have the ability to connect to physical media or mount ISO images. We're going to mount the ISO image for the VMware Visor Installer 5.0 and go ahead and install it on this server. I'd like to point out that this is an actual HP server, not a virtual machine created in VMware Workstation or some other emulated environment, an actual HP server. Okay, our server's gone ahead and booted to the ISO image that we specified, the ESXi5 ISO image, and we're going to go ahead and install it. The first thing that has to happen with ESXi5 is the bootloader, all of the drivers, and the VMware tools have to load. Now we see the hypervisor loading. and now we get to choose the few options that we get to pick during the ESXi installation process. Enter to continue, F11 to accept the EULA, it sees our local HP logical drive, we're going to choose a keyboard, this is new by the way in ESX5, the ability to specify a password is also new in ESXi 5. And it would like us to confirm the repartitioning of our disks before installing, so we'll press F11 to confirm that and the ESXi 5.0 installation process is off and running. One of the things you'll notice about installing ESXi 5.0 is it tends to hang at certain installation percentages for quite a while and then go a whole bunch of percent at one time. For example, 34%. In our environment, it hangs at 34% for quite a few seconds before it moves on.
and the installation has been completed successfully. Please note it reminds you to remove the installation disk before rebooting. Since we're using ILO, all we have to do is disconnect from our mounted ISO image. When that's no longer mounted, we press enter to reboot. And the server will shut down and reboot. Okay, here we are loading the hypervisor. Starting virtualization. and we're up and running. All in all, the process of installing ESXi 5 was quite simple and only a little bit different than in previous versions. If you recall, it actually asked us for a password rather than simply installing to the root user with no password as it did in previous versions. Let's go ahead and log in and set up our system. We're going to press F2 to customize the system and log in with the password that we set. The interface is a little bit cleaner than in previous versions, but otherwise largely the same. The first thing we're going to do is configure our management network. We're going to select IP configuration. And as you can see, it's been configured to use a DHCP supplied IP address. In most situations, that's not going to be a desirable configuration. Remember, you're not going to use your mouse in this screen, so use your up and down arrows and spacebar to select. We're going to change the IP address of our ESX server to match our lab convention and everything else that was supplied by DHCP is already OK. Now we're going to select DNS configuration and be sure to set the host name. and we're going to press escape to return to the previous menu. Yes, we're going to apply the changes and restart the management network. Now we're going to scroll down to troubleshooting options. I would like to enable the ESXi shell, which is going to allow me to log into the console using ILO, and I would like to enable SSH, which is going to allow me to log in to the command line interface using PuTTY. I'm going to restart the management agents once again. And enter for OK. We're all done here on the console, so before we leave, we're not just going to disconnect, we're going to press Escape to exit, and we're going to press Escape to log out. When we're finished configuring our ESX server at the console, we want to be sure to leave it secure. So log out to this secure splash screen. We're going to exit our remote console, and in fact, we're going to exit ILO. Now, in previous versions of ESX, it was possible to download and install the client directly from the ESX server. 
That is no longer the case with ESX i5. You need to download the VI client directly from VMware. It will be supplied alongside your ESX i ISO images. We're going to go ahead and install the VMware VI client so we can connect to our ESX server and take a quick look around. And the installation is completed. Let's go ahead and log into our ESX server. We're going to type the name of our ESX server. Along with the username root. It's always root, but your password is what you set during the install. If you don't have functioning DNS resolution in your environment, you can always type the IP address of your ESX server. We'll install the certificate for this server and choose ignore. And of course we've installed to the evaluation license copy which is good for 60 days. Taking a quick look around we see a very familiar interface. Most of the configurations will be the same or very similar as what we saw in vSphere 4. There are some significant improvements but not a whole lot of major differences. Please check back for our next video, Installing a Virtual Machine and Building vCenter 5. I'm John Borhek, Chief Solutions Architect and CEO of VM Sources Virtualization, www.vmsources.com, or call us at 866-644-7764. Thank you for watching.